Hi there, Norman here from Rome FM, or that's the norm if you're seeing this on this YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to make a quick video about how I have explored navigation through uh, a Rome research graph, through different third-party apps, as well as some rationales for specific decisions I've had to make so that it's just easier for me to navigate through all of my notes, all of my blogs and pages, etc. This is part of a series of Rome videos that I was recording where maybe if you're interested in creating your own custom setup, it'd be really useful to look at different case studies of people uh, showcasing that. Uh, so this is my take on the navigation part of it. This is using Rome 42, the extension, as well as a few third-party apps, one of them being paid. So just to take note of that, um, that being said, enjoy the video. So this is an extension of the previous page that I was uh, writing notes in for the previous video in this series, hopefully, if that video <laughs> comes out or if it makes sense. But I use a very strange set of shortcuts for navigating through my Rome graph. Firstly, this requires the following extension called Rome 42. And if you do not know Rome 42, it is an amazing set of extensions, features, installations, etc., all into this one package. And it's currently managed by David Vargas, but created by uh, Chris, a.k.a. Um, TFT hacker uh, on Twitter and really said Rome hacker. Whoops. So shout outs to you, Chris, and thank you, David, for you know managing it up until now. One of the useful or probably the most useful feature for me is the deep jump navigation um, function. So deep jump or deep nav, or well, I call it deep nav, is a way for you to navigate through your graph without using your mouse at all. So we'll just do some examples. Right. So we have these specific blocks. It could be about anything. I just wrote some random stuff on, on the page. Deep nav allows you to go from one block to the other without using your mouse. If we are going from here, and I'm going to use my mouse to um, to go from one block to the other, maybe I have a whole ton of blocks, but then I need to go through them one by one. So I use my mouse and I say, okay, let's go here. I forgot what this is about. So let me just click the, let me just click the arrow. Ah, that's what that means. And then I go back here. Let's open this and I click here and I um, look at the block and I try to decide what, what do I do next, right? That's cool. That's actually, that works really well. But for myself, it's a bit too slow. I don't want to take my hands off of my keyboard or at least my right hand and then put it on the mouse and then start, you know, going through all these notes uh, one at a time. So instead, if I'm here and I click escape and I press G, G will activate deep nav and deep nav will create these indicators on the, on the left where you can click the symbols in relation to the block or the line um, of your choice. For example, I want to look at the line that says, okay, cool. Right next to it is the letter B. I will click B and my cursor will go there. You can tell my cursor is now there because, well, I have my other CSS on, so my line is pointing me right down to that to that block and, th and telling me yes i can now type on this line and if maybe if i'm done here i'm thinking okay i am done with this block let's go back to the previous one instead of going here taking my mouse and clicking here so i can continue i can escape g2 so that's all done with one hand. So put my hand up here, escape G3, escape G2, escape G5, escape GB. So now my left hand is dedicated to navigation. Well, as much as possible. If, if it starts to ha have so many blocks, then maybe it'll be, be a bit too difficult, but still, um, your left hand in this case starts to get very, very used to navigation. Try a random page. This is uh, a post I wrote ages ago. And 
let's just say I'm here and I have a lot of notes. So if I press G, I can use my mouse to scroll wheel. And then instead of clicking, I can click maybe seven, five, enter. And I will go straight to the cursor. Now, if the page becomes too long, you might be thinking, oh, you're still going to use the mouse anyway because you have to scroll all the way down to find that specific page or that specific block of interest. What's the point of being so obsessed with going mouseless? And this is where I would like to still fight for that because there is a way to do this completely mouseless. And that is when we have to start using third-party apps to change our relationship with uh, the way that we use our keyboards normally so that it works really, really well with um, this uh, with this setup. So I have Carabiner installed. Carabiner is a third-party application that helps you edit or modify the keys on your keyboard so that it works uh, in a very different manner. And I have the following three uh, in installed. I have Caps Lock turns into Hyper. Uh, or escape if it's just tapped. Uh, I have uh, the ability to turn on caps lock, the function, by just uh, pressing the left shift and the right shift together. And then I have caps lock plus uh, IJKL for almost Vim-like navigation. So let's just go through what each of these do. I also have another app uh, called Smart Scroll, which is a paid app actually, uh, where I have replaced or I have custom keys to introduce different ways of scrolling on a page. With a combination of Carabiner and Smart Scroll, what I have done is that I have used the Hyper function, and Hyper just means a combination of Shift, Command, Option, and Control at the same time. That's, that's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else uh, beyond that. Hyper is now another extra layer uh, on my keyboard. I can now use Hyper whatever to do something uh, on my screen or on my laptop. By creating a combination of custom keys on my keyboard, I can now introduce custom keys for my smart scroll. And what that means is that I can now add in hyper WSAD, or basically just first person shooter combinations and controls um, for scrolling across a page, which means that I can go here and I can put my hand up and I'll use caps lock WSAD to go down a page. You can hear I'm tapping my keyboard. This is me clicking hyper W or caps lock W and hyper S or caps lock S because I've already replaced the function caps lock with the hyper function. And the best part is if it says escape if alone, the best part is if I'm in my cursor somewhere in here, I can just tap the caps lock button and it would actually create the, it would actually initiate or input the escape function. So I can escape, escape twice so that I can, um, you know, deselect completely. And this creates some amazing navigational opportunities. So when you have hyper WSAD, I can just use with one hand, go here, press G, and then 93, enter. Or, you know, number, number, enter. You have to have enters because you have to try to determine between the different, there's a whole bunch of, you know, uh, blocks. So you want to make sure you don't get confused. So sometimes smart blocks, or sorry, sometimes the deep nav adds an enter just to determine the differences between different, um, uh, different blocks. So what that means is that without even touching my mouse, I can type away I can type away and select any I can select any block in the page without touching my mouse. So I can just focus more on typing while thinking instead of browsing, like pausing my thinking mode and then browsing so that I can get to the next point. So if I'm thinking about something and I'm like, oh, okay, this reminds me of another point that I should think about in another paragraph. So I just, you know, if I, if I'm thinking about things like here in digital garden, I'm like, oh, uh, just typing a lot here. I'm done here. I hyper S to go further down. And then I'm extending another point here uh, underneath this specific block. So you never know. This is extension of the previous. Right? 
don't need to use my mouse at all. This is an example, an extreme example of going mouseless. And I'm pretty sure this kind of efficiency is not for everybody, but it really works well for me because I want to keep frantically typing. I want to minimize the friction or the pause in trying to get to another point uh, on the page and typing away. Rome works well in a way where it is encouraging to type away no matter what you say. Uh, so if the next thing you're going to say requires it to be located in a different part of the page, I want to minimize the seconds in which I am not in that context that it needs to be in. So something as you know fast as this <laughs> may be a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit difficult for maybe a little bit irrelevant for for some Roman users, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, to expand more on the other uh, functions in Carabiner, the second one. Uh, toggle caps lock is just so that I don't lose the ability to actually toggle caps lock in case I need it for something else. Um, and also caps lock IJKL just means that instead of using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I can just use hyper J and K to go up or down or I and L to go uh, left or right. So yes, I've already created a setup for my keyboard so that I can navigate Roam better. So how would that be applied even in a larger context? To what extent do I actually need that level of navigation? Well, this is when it becomes really interesting because this becomes very important when you start to have many different uh, tabs open at the same time. So I'll just show this really quickly. So these are just example pages that I had open from before in the previous video. But what happens now is that with your left hand, you can jump to any page that's open in the sidebar as well as in the main window. Also, you can also scroll and browse through your sidebars and your main window by just going hyper A or D on your uh, keyboard. So if I need to go left and right on something, maybe I'm just thinking about something, I'm like, okay, I remember Window number three is talking about something very, very important. And I go back here and I'm thinking to myself, what do I do next? And then I go to window number five and I want to add something there. I press G, I go S18, and I'm now on this uh, block uh, of my choice or of my interest so that I can start continuing my Uh, note taking. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit insane that I have to change my the way of my keyboard functions just so I can work Rome a little bit faster. But you know, it it works really well there. So we have the deep nav for Rome forty two. We have the carabiner for allowing these things to happen. Uh, we have the smart scroll to allow scrolling to work on a, on a hyperlayer, and then we have the meta J functions for Rome 42. So let me just explain that. I only use two. Well, actually I use uh, a little bit more, but I'll just, I'll explain them in a second. So meta J or on Mac, it's command J and on windows, it's alt J would give you a number of commands. They're called jump nav. So a little bit different from deep nav. So meta J is essentially once you click that combination, meta J or you know Alt or uh, Command, clicking a letter after would initiate a command in the back end to send you somewhere or to do something, right? As an example, normally if I'm here and then I want to go all the way to here, I would click using my mouse. I would just move my mouse here and I would click here. Alternatively, if you have room 42, you know, deselect your, uh, the, take your cursor away, deselect it, and then go to uh, turn on your deep nav and then press B and you will be there as well. But another way to do this is to memorize the shortcut for select the block at the bottom of the main window page. 
which is meta j b. So if I type in Mac, command j and then b, I will arrive at the last block on my main page, which is so, so just immediately. I didn't even do anything. I didn't move my mouse. I didn't turn on deep nav. I just went jump nav meta j b. Similarly, if I'm at the bottom one and I want to go to the very top block, I will move my mouse to click here. Or I would deselect, press G, and then look at the corresponding number or letter next to the block of my interest, which is one, and I would select it uh, using deep nav. But jump nav is meta J T. So T for top, right? So meta J T. This is very useful because if you have a really, really long page and then you're gonna be continuing the very bottom, you can just press meta JB and you can start continuing on with your with your notes. Or if you if you are at the bottom and then you don't want to scroll all the way back up, you can just meta JT and then you can just go back up. The other shortcuts that I use is expand and collapse. So normally when you have a lot of children blocks, a lot of parent blocks, you can just click the arrows next to them so that you can expand them. But then what if you want to expand them all at once? You can do uh, meta J X, so X for expand. Sometimes X, sometimes meta J X doesn't work, so we'll have to figure that out another time. Um, but it, that one is the one that I use the most. And the other one is uh, collapse all on the page. So if you have a lot of pages with a ton of blocks and it starts to lag or something like that, or it just gets too messy, too many words, and you're like, no, I, I just want to reset the formatting of the page. Um, I just want to compress everything, collapse everything, and then let me just try over, uh, try it over all over again. Uh, then I would do meta J C, which is collapse or collapse all. And if you just have everything open and you're like, this is such a mess, what am I looking at? Let me just reset and try to make sense of what I'm looking at right now. So I would just type meta JC and everything will be back to their parent block collapsed, which makes for a very clean navigation if you need to look at the headings of something really quickly. If you have a ton of headings, if you have something like um, As you can tell, like the more that we have like so many more blocks or the more that a page just starts to expand, which is what's it meant to, it's, it's meant to happen, right? When you're, you know, using your graph more and more often, there's just so many things. And sometimes some parts of a page you don't want to look at, or it's just not useful. So you would use command JC to collapse everything, then press G, go to the block of your interest, and then you would use the shortcut for focus on block, which is how you would try to navigate through these things really quickly without using your mouse if you intend to focus on a block for for specific navigational purposes. So yeah. Jump nav is very, very useful. And when done in conjunction with deep nav, it just works really, really well. The last thing I want to share is the shortcuts in vanilla Roam that I like to use a lot to the point where I have specific custom shortcuts so that I can do them with only my left hand because that's where the hyperlayer exists. So so we have these hotkeys on our Roam. Everybody has them and we have defaults for them. There are some, uh, some hotkeys I have changed so that I can use the hyperlayer from my carabiner in conjunction with these hotkeys in the Roam graph so that I can do all of these actions um, with one hand. So for example, moving a block that I'm selecting up or down, I would do hyper, which is, you know, what all this are, hyper three or hyper four. So I would press basically my caps lock key and then click three or four, and then the, the block will move up or down, up or down. Similarly, if I just try and find it, expand or collapsing a block. If I just need to look at, you know, one specific block, I just want to expand and collapse it in, in one hierarchy. I use uh, hyper R and E. So now I have 
hyper, WSAD for scrolling, hyper RNE for expanding and collapsing, one block, and hyper three and four for um, moving a block up or down. And the last one, which is a very unique one, is hyper T for toggling inline references. And what this means is that if you, you know, you tend to be the kind of person who references blocks specifically, not pages, blocks, then this would help expand or collapse those, you know, like the little number notation on the right side so that it would be easier for you to pop or toggle that open to see where is it I'm seeing this block being used elsewhere in my graph without actually using my mouse to click the number. So that's just me just being very, very particular about it. Uh, as an example, if I just do this, um, okay, left hand up. If I use caps lock three and four, this block will move up and down. If I go here, and I use caps lock, E and R, I'm expanding and collapsing. And I notice that this block has a, has a, um, it's, uh, it's referenced somewhere. What's pretty cool is that clicking the button for toggle inline references works for every single inline reference counter on the page that you're looking at. So if I click hyper T, it would open every single inline reference. So I can see, okay, this is used somewhere else. This is used here. This is used here. And then if it's just too messy, I don't need it anymore. I can just close it like an accordion and then just get rid of it. So I can just click T, click T, hyper T, hyper T, hyper T, something like that. And it's just this manipulation of attention through shortcuts, navigation, uh, etc. And that's pretty much how I navigate my, my roam. Um, it's kind of messed up. <laughs> it works for me. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to explain why it works because for some reason, I just, I, I feel a lot slower when I start using the mouse. So I just want to keep typing and then, and then my left hand is dedicated to navigating, dedicated to jump nav, to deep nav somewhere. Um, and for so far, it's been working really well. Maybe it will change over time. Uh, maybe there'll be another new extension I will experiment with, but for the time being, that's how navigation can work uh, in Rome. So hopefully you learned something from that and maybe you can try it out for yourself.